So first off, what do we mean or what do we think about when we're talking about Criterion C? The first thing to consider is that the extended essay is graded out of 34 points. 12 points are dedicated to Criterion C, which make it by far the most important criterion in any of the criteria applied to the essay. So for any student to succeed in the extended essay, you must do well in Criterion C. You can do relatively poorly in the other criteria and still achieve well, but you cannot achieve the highest grades in the extended essay without doing well in Criterion C. In fact, I know this probably isn't the best way to start this, but I'm going to start with a cautionary tale. because I'm going to take this from the examiner reports that have come out and guidance to examiners. There is a statement that says, for an inappropriately configured World Studies extended essay in Criterion C, the maximum score you can achieve is 3 out of 12. Now that's a, a massive blow to any essay. So any essay that isn't configured correctly from a World Studies perspective can only score 3 out of 12 for this criteria. Keeping in mind that the criterion boundaries are only five or six marks apart, a nine point hit, so from 12 down to three, would effectively take you down at least one grade and possibly two grades just on whether your essay is configured correctly in a world, in a world studies context. So what we need to do first then as a supervisor or as a school or as a student in this particular, in this particular essay category is to make sure that the essay is correctly configured. So what does that mean in an, ex in an extended essay in World Studies? Well, firstly, it must be about two subjects, and they must be IB subjects. So you can't just say, for example, I'm going to look at uh, an issue that is about law or about education, shall we say, neither of which are IB subjects. Yes, they might be very worthy and very valid in terms of study, but unless they're two IB subjects, your essay is not going to be correctly configured. So the two subjects you choose, you've got to do a couple of jobs before you go too far. The first one is you've got to state what those subjects are. You've got to say why they are necessary in the evaluation of the research question that you choose. You've got to justify them. So in the early stages of the essay, in the introduction, you've got to be really clear and say, I'm going to use the lenses of geography and biology, for example. And you've got to say why you need to do geography and biology and why either one of those is insufficient to analyze this particular topic on their own. They also need to be used throughout. It's not enough in the introduction to say, I'm going to do a geography and biology essay and then spend all of your time doing biology or all of your time doing geography. They've got to be integrated and they've got to be used or the lenses from those two subjects have to be clearly referred to and used throughout the essay. The second thing, in terms of this configuration idea, it must be contemporary. So the issue must be contemporary. That means within the student lifetime. For our students, our current seniors, you're really looking, the essay must be about an issue that has occurred in the last 17 or 18 years. So it's got to be post 2000. Anything before that isn't valid for a World Studies extended essay. It might have a historical component. It might be as part of its background, there are elements to this that begin beyond that period of time, that's okay, but the key focus of the essay must be within that time frame. Thirdly, it must be an issue of global significance. That's, I realize, a little open to interpretation, but how do we say if it's global significance? Well, are people out there talking about this? Is it in the media? Can you find elements and articles online discussing this particular question? If so, it is it is of significance. It can't just be about one place, one country, one issue. It's got to be globally significant, and that's important for a student to identify. And possibly the most difficult of these in a World Studies essay is, can it be effectively evaluated and analyzed in 4,000 words? So it's got to be an issue of global significance that we can scale down to a place of 4,000 words being an effective evaluation of that particular issue. That's a really important thing for a supervisor to do. For a student, that's a very difficult decision to make. But for a supervisor, you've got to be able to look at the problem or look at the issue and look at the question and say, yes, we can scale this down. Yes, we can.
and we can do this within 4,000 words. If you can't, you're going to be dead in the water from the very start. So let's have a little think first about what do we look for in Criterion C to avoid some of these incorrectly configured concepts that the examiners look for. Firstly, I mean everyone, you as a supervisor and your students ideally together or in some combination, you go to the IB EE dedicated website. It's the place to start, it gives you lots of guidance, it gives you lots of examples and things to consider. For Criterion C, there are some fundamental questions that you need to be able to answer, or no, really your student needs to be able to answer, um, when they're considering their essay. And if you read the essay, you should be able to see these and identify these fairly easily. One, does your research question relate to the evidence? So, the research question that you start out with, with your student, your student starts out with, and the evidence that they've collected, do the two gel? Or have they created one question here, and then gone off on a tangent and collected a whole load of other evidence, but the two don't weave together? It's important that there is a consistency and the two work together. Second, are the different elements of the essay connected together logically? Does it flow as an argument, does it flow as an investigation and a piece of research? One of the dangers in a world studies essay is that you're using two subject lenses and that you end up with two very different essays kind of just joined together. They do a bit of geography or a bit of biology and the two live in separate worlds. It's important to make sure these are connected logically. Three, are the analysis and the conclusions obviously linked? So is there a clear analysis that takes place and does it take us to a clear conclusion? And in the conclusion, can I identify what analysis has taken place beforehand? And three, is there a, oh, sorry, not three, four, is there a clear thread of reasoning? So one of the key factors of Criterion C is it's the place of critical analysis. There must be a clear set of reasoning from point A to point B to point C to conclusion. That should be an easily identifiable thread all the way through. And as a supervisor, your job is to make sure that the student's work isn't just this hodgepodge of ideas or research all thrown onto the page, but it is distilled down into a clear step-by-step -step argument and set of reasons that take us to a point of conclusion which is logically consistent with the reasoning, analysis and evidence that you've collected. Criterion C specifically relates though to critical analysis and that's the key. So what do we mean by critical analysis? So from this criterion's perspective, critical analysis refers to I think kind of five things really. Firstly, how appropriate are the sources and methods used? By appropriateness, it means there's a need for students to think about what they're using in the essay and say, do, this, do these sources or does this information help me answer my research question? If it doesn't, don't put it in. If it does so partially, say so. It's useful in these ways, in this form, it takes us to this point in our argument, but it has limitations. Identify those limitations, that's part of an evaluative process. The methods that are being used should also be consistent with the subject lenses being used. So if you're using geography as an example, there are tools and methods of spatial analysis that would be expected to be used for any geographical investigation. If you're doing a world studies essay that uses geography, you would expect to see those tools utilized in the analysis of the data that's collected. Is the data, this is the second point, is the data collected evaluated or is it merely described? So analysis and evaluation means that you've got to have, you're going to go way beyond this idea of just describing what you found. So you can't just go out and do lots of research and then take snippets out and just paste it into a page and hope that it comes together. There's got to be the student voice, the student analysis of what takes place. How useful is it? What are its limitations? How valid is the evidence in answering that research question? That's a really important task if you're going to move to the higher bands of Criterion C. It's got to show clear analysis and evaluative skill. What are the limits of the arguments being put forward? The student themselves must be able to say, 
right, I've answered this question, but let's be realistic. Most issues of global significance are not going to be solved in 4,000 words. They're going to be scratching the surface, and students have got to be able to say in a reflective and evaluative way, how, what have they done? How far have they gone with this argument? Their reasoning is applicable to what point? Is it applicable completely to this, or is it just very much a localised way of interpreting this particular question? Also, one of, the, one of the good skills or skills we look for in students who achieve really well is the ability to identify things that don't normally fit or unusual outcomes or unexpected um, source material that takes these, these essays into places that would be a little unpredictable. The ability to evaluate, describe and discuss that takes essays to another place. It takes them to a higher level. It shows that the students going beyond just the original research or just the secondary research they've come across that other people have already done. So probably, if you're watching this, uh, your goal is to score well or allow your students to score as well as they possibly can. So if we look at criterion C, it's unusual. It's not like the other criteria in the extended essay which have got very clear statements. In criterion C, there are three components that students need to demonstrate success in. Because it's worth these 12 marks, it's broken down into three sections. The first section is research. So, uh, and the word excellent is used in the descriptor. And if you look in the examiner reports, they're always talking about excellence in terms of research. So what does excellent research look like? One, it's got to be of sufficient scale. So you've got to have enough material underpinning your essay. It cannot be based on one or two sources. Keep in mind, you've got two, two subject areas that are coming together in a big question. So there should be a lot of research and a lot of ideas out there. If there isn't, if, this, if the question is too obscure and there's not much research out there in your preliminary discussions with your students, don't do it. Yeah, you're not gonna have sufficient scale of research to build your argument. So one, you need scale. Two, you need balance. Remember, it's gotta be from two subject lenses and that means that your research has to be couched in two different places and you've got to have source material from those two, two areas. And three, relevance. So the research that you do has to be directly relevant to the research question and subject matter that your essay is built around. We don't want extraneous material, we don't want irrelevancies, all of that detracts from the, the essay and it detracts from its coherence. The second part of this criteria is analysis. And the analysis being excellent, what does that mean? It means it's focused, it means it's relevant to the topic, and it means that the conclusions are supported by the analysis, in that there is a, a clear pathway. It's not descriptive, it is evaluative, it is analytical. So the question itself is being really pulled apart and really broken down and thought about in a great deal of depth. Each assertion that you make as a student or you as a supervisor are trying to support your student with needs to be supported with evidence. So that analysis can't just be speculative, it can't be opinion, it's got to have some sort of an analytical underpinning. And thirdly, uh, the discussion and evaluation. So this is really about the quality of the discussion and how critical is the lens that the student uses in developing its argument or their argument. What are the limits of the source? What are the limits of their findings? What are the limits of their essay? How valid are the sources? What biases are existing? You know, that there's a, a need for the student to reflect on the source and on their interpretation of the source and on their own conclusions. All of those are really important in order to do well in Criterion C. So finally, really, the last parts to think about here are what does it mean for you as a supervisor in terms of supervisory support? Well, one, the World Studies essay, I think, the supervisor's role is more critical than in any other essay. A, a single subject discipline essay is usually a, a specialist in that essay, and they're very, you know, they have clear vision in their head of what the essay should look like. If you're a physics teacher doing a physics essay, you've got a very clear pathway in your head of what that looks like. In a world studies essay often it's much more muddied it takes much more time to kind of distill down to a clear focus and i think the key 
for a supervisor in the early phase of, phase of the essay with their student, with their supervisee, is to work on the research question. I think when you leap into a research question too soon, too quickly, it's a recipe for disaster. The research question is key. Spend time developing that. Spend time thinking about that and justifying it. And part of that is the management of scale. The essay has to be doable in 4,000 words. One of the problems with World Studies essays is they're often very big questions with very global, um, globally significant issues which are too big. We can't solve them. We can't analyze them effectively. So the, the supervisor's job, one, is to manage the research question, and two, manage the scale. Next, the supervisor needs to help with research. Now, the problem with a World Studies essay is often you may not be an expert in both subjects. I mean, I've supervised essays in geography and ESS and even history and ITGS. I'm not an expert in all of those places, so you need to find the expertise to support you. So you encourage the students to talk to the teachers who are the experts. They will be able to point the in the into the direction of um, effective sources, good questions that exist within that subject, and to support them in building the lenses and the methods for those particular subjects. Finally, check this. I know there's a lot of information. I realize I'm talking at you for a long time, but the final kind of checklist of things to do. In the early phase of a World Studies essay, you've got to meet your student every week. That may not be possible in some context, and that's very difficult. In my head, in the early phase, to make sure the research question is nailed down, that your justification for the validity of your essay is clear in your mind and in the student's mind, I think you start on a very, very tight rein with your student. Then you get to write the introduction, where you justify the issue of global significance, why you need the two subject lenses. You justify why this is worthy of investigation. Why do you need geography and biology, if those are the two lenses? And before you go in too far, you get a skeleton of your plan. What is the argument going to look like? What do you think the argument is going to be? And you start to sketch that out early. And then you make sure that you've got sufficient evidence to support that argument and that question before you go too far. And I think with world studies, there's a need for flexibility because often I think you go down pathways where you know you realize you can't do this. It's not doable in your 4,000 words and you need to, sh to shape, remold, remodel your research question. And I think you've got to be prepared for that. So I think in this particular subject area, you need flexibility. And finally, just remember, the criterion C in world studies Unless you get this particular criterion right, it's very difficult to achieve well. So think very carefully and use this as the core of your planning whenever you're doing a World Studies essay. Uh, I hope this has been of, been of use. Um, I'm happy to en get engaged in any discussion if you wish to do so. Uh, good luck. Enjoy World Studies. Goodbye.